white sand, softly washed by the blue waters of the Pacific, the languid warmth of summer breezes perfumed by flowers. This is the South Seas. The last frontier of romance and peace in a troubled world lies off the beaten track of oceanic travel. Gateway to the South Seas is Tahiti, better known than other islands in the Polynesian group. Much has been written about this colorful outpost. Life here is undisturbed by the fortunes of the world outside. This is a peaceful bit of France. But it is still Tahiti, even though some of its younger women wear civilized clothes. They want to be like white women, but they will always be Tahitians. These are subjects of his Britannic majesty. They are Maoris, one of the most intelligent native races of the empire. South Island, home of the Maoris, consists of a precarious crust of safety above a subterranean inferno, evidenced by boiling springs. The whole district is famous for its geysers and superheated pools, and the native women take advantage of them by cooking much of their food in specially made boiling bags. How simple, yet there is no evidence that natives so blessed by nature in other lands ever thought of this. Thoroughly cooked potatoes ready for the Maori dinner table. When a native woman meets someone she loves, this is the way she shows it. The art of wood carving is a heritage of prehistoric ancestors, skilled wood carvers. Much of their work remains. Some carvings suggest our modernistic studios. Others show rare artistry. A little more than 50 years ago, these were cannibal isles inhabited by a savage people. And there are villages today where it is still old Fiji. Here in the interior of one of the larger islands, these people perform the same dances as did their ancestors centuries ago. The Miki Miki, danced as almost all Polynesians express emotion to rhythm, with graceful hand and head movement, and a never-ending chant, accompanied by the hollow sound of log drums beaten with the hand. It is difficult to believe that their ancestors were feared by early explorers. Certainly there is no suggestion here of a savage heritage. Snow white teeth and a friendly smile, a typical belle of the Fiji Isles. East of Fiji, America's stake in the South Seas is centered here at Pago Pago, Samoa. It is a naval station, one of many Pacific bases. This mansion, formerly the home of Robert Louis Stevenson, is used by the governor, who was always the commanding officer of the naval contingent in the islands. Not far from this spot is the last resting place of Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote his own epitaph. This be the verse you grave for me. Here he lies where he longed to be. Home is the sailor, home from the sea, and the hunter, home from the hill. Breadfruit trees and coconut palms are abundant on the islands, and the fruit is easily reached by the natives who will defy a white man to do this. Obtaining food is so simple. A Samoan's home is merely a circle of pillars and a thatched roof. They are the purest type of Polynesians, and may have been the originators of tattooing. For the word tattoo is Polynesian, meaning to decorate the skin with dyes. Life in Samoa is casual. There are no scarcities. A new dress is merely a problem of going out and cutting some grass, then weaving it. The palm leaf can be used for hundreds of necessary things. 
The tough slivers from the stalk are like steel, but lighter than aluminum. The Samoan is a master of the weaving art, and his deft flying fingers quickly fashion whatever it is he needs for his wife or himself. There it is, ready for his next catch of fish. Here, the ceremonial dance, typical of all Polynesia, is called the Siva Siva. But there is one thing different about the Samoan festival of rhythm. There is always a chiefess of the dance, honored in this way for her beauty and popularity. This is not the girl. Wait. There she is, with maids of honor. No doubt about her regal beauty. No people of the South Seas are superior to Samoans. Just off the northern coast of Australia, there are lands of the South Seas rarely visited. A people primitive and hostile. Impenetrable jungles, gigantic swamps, crude homes infested with flying ants and hordes of mosquitoes. Small wonder that this is a land far beyond the frontiers of romance. It is a strong child who survives. Infant mortality is tragically high in these primitive places. To live is to become immune to disease. A Papuan village is built over the water with one side touching the land, so it cannot be surrounded by enemies from other villages. Cannibalism has so depleted the male population to whom this fate generally falls, the women greatly outnumber the men. So it is that a male infant receives all the care and crude protection that an ignorant savage can devise. The village will need its men. Women, their life work is to be a wife, one of several wives always. They can propose marriage, and if refused, the man will be severely beaten. Adornment of the skin takes the place of clothes. Here's one who likes a V-neck effect. Bells of the South Sea. Wealthy Papuans bedeck their heads for ceremonial occasions. And this colorful bonnet is made of bird of paradise feathers, and it represents a small fortune to the owner. Then there's the warrior type who disdains adornment unless it brutalizes him. The ceremony now is a devil dance, ordered by this sinister witch doctor, all powerful, who rules the entire village through superstition and mumbo jumbo. For the warriors may be savage and even courageous, but they fear devils and the witch doctor's medicine. The women are less credulous because it is a man's world here. What difference would a few more devils make? The skin drums begin to boom. The dance begins. It will go on for hours in a monotony that dulls the brain. Individuality is submerged. All move and think as one. There is no music that deserves the word, nothing of grace or of beauty. Simply a tuneless chant, the brutal rhythm of skin drums, the scuffling of bare feet on the hard ground. Here, the light of civilization is as dim as the fading light of day in the South Sea.